Hi guys, I am here with Romeo the Poodle. Um, we're gonna get him cleaned up, give him a poodle puppy trim. And if you didn't see his last video, you should check it out. We're gonna see how he's progressing. He's about six months old now, and he's learning his grooming manners, right? Right? You're learning your grooming manners? He's a wild and crazy dog. Yes, he is. Yes, he is a wild and crazy dog. Yeah, ready? All right, so I'm gonna get him on the groomer's harness and get him tethered so that he doesn't have quite so much wiggle room, right? He's busy. All right. Let's do this, Romeo. So we're gonna go straight to the hard part with him. Doesn't like his face shaved at all. Last time he was very difficult about it. He screamed, he snapped, he fought. So we're gonna go straight to it. First thing I'm gonna do is give him a treat before we get started. Yeah, you want some? Yeah, good boy just to kind of break the ice that this is a happy thing and that I love him. Dizzy loves you. Dizzy, yeah. You sit. Yes, good boy. Ready? Oh, are you ready? Here we go. Good boy. Good boy. There we go. Oh, oh yes. There we go. Good boy. Just go ahead and get this right on out of the way. Yes, good boy. That's it. You're fine. Yeah, I know. It's a rough one being a poodle. Yeah. You want to lay down? You can do that. There you go. Okay, you can lay down. Good boy, you're fine. I know, it's a rough life. It's a rough life. Don't show me your teeth. I don't want to see your teeth. I know you have pretty pearly whites. Yes, I know you have pretty pearly whites. Get a grip, my man. Head. Move you guys down so you can see a little better. All right, my man. Come here. No, sir. No, sir. Good boy. There you go. There you go, good boy. See? See? You good boy. See? Good boy. There you go. Let me see. Let me get a grip here. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. No biting. No 
Animal Friday. Good boy. Good boy, see? There. There. Good boy. Right there. Good boy, Coffee. Good. Good boy. Good boy. That's it. So when I think he's going to bite, I do have to hold the mouth shut to protect his tongue, to protect his lips from the clipper. But the second, and I do hold it a little on the tight side to hold it shut. But the second he softens, the second I feel him giving in my hand, I immediately loosen my, my touch. Good boy, like right now, it's very light touch. And we'll get to where it's a very light touch with him for the whole thing. But, you know, any of you who've ridden horses, you understand pressure and release when it comes to, you know, your horse's mouth. And if you don't know horses, you probably haven't a clue what I'm talking about. But when you're riding a horse and you've got your hands on the reins, there's a bit in the horse's mouth. And so when the horse has their head and they're pulling against the bit, it feels a little tight on the reins and it feels tight on their mouth. When they drop their head and arch their neck and give their head, you loosen your hands just a bit. And it's an immediate reward to the horse to say, yes, good, good job, good decision. And if they lean their head back out, it tightens on their mouth and it tightens the reins. And then when they drop their head again, you give them a definite release. He's finding where the edge of the table is, he's fine. He's fine. I'm just giving him a break. Sometimes I like to just take the pressure off and talk to you guys and let the puppy just have a breather. Have a breather. So we'll go back over that face at the end just to reinforce what we just did. But I got the whole face shaved this time. Very little problems. Um, overall, it went really well. And so you'll see him progress each time and get better and better and better. All right, let's raise you back up. Down here. Now we're gonna shave the feet. Good boy. Very nice. Ah. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy.
Good boy. So when dogs are making the wrong decision, that's one thing, but when they're making the right decision, you've got to tell them. You can't just leave them hanging and thinking everything is wrong because then they're going to hate grooming. And that's how you retain the balance. By telling them when they're good, by, you know, rewarding them at the right times. Good boy. And not getting mad at them. If you can keep yourself soft and keep your touch light, you know, you're going to see him turn into a great grim dog. Probably right about his first birthday. <laughs> right? And he's going to like coming. He's not going to be all stressed out. That's the important part, right? We'll get there. Ignore the screaming. Good boy. As you can see with today's groom, there's much less of that, isn't there? Remember last time all that noise he was making? It's like, oh my gosh. Let me take him shorter today too. and just knock off some of this hair the scissors so there's not so much to blow dry ignoring the sillies good good so I'm praising when he stops tap dancing a dog like this will work for your praise. They want your praise more than anything. Good. And they pay attention when you give it. And they'll do what you ask of them over and over and over again to see if that's what really gets them the praise. Good boy. Good. So I want him to hold still so every time the feet quit moving, I say good. And I'll reinforce it in the middle if they stay still. With a good boy. That's a good boy. Good. I think it's time for a treat. Can you give me that? I think it's time for a treat. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yeah. Let's go ahead and cut you loose. Good boy. Good. Good. 
So if the pet parent's watching, um, be sure to use a harness on him when you take him for walks. Anytime he's got pressure anywhere near his throat, like from my hand, he's coughing. With his wild personality and the lunging forward on the leash, he's going to mess up his trachea um, just by his personality on a leash. So I would definitely switch to a harness for him. A lot of people would say, well, a harness teaches them to pull. Well, in the meantime, while you're training him, like if you're in classes or you're in physical training, use training collar. But when you are just letting him walk and sniff and, you know, do his thing, use a harness. Because every time he lunges forward on that collar, He's pushing on his trachea, and you just don't want lifelong problems from that. So, when I'm in class, I do use a collar on my dogs. When I am physically training, I use a collar. When I am just walking my dogs to let them go potty or to just let them sniff around and have some free roam and play, they wear a harness. We have rabbits all around our house and turkeys and all kinds of stuff like that. And our poodles would whew, right on the end of that leash, you know, unless I have them in heel and I'm physically telling them to sit and stay. But if they're sniffing around having a good time, it's not training time. So there's balance and everything. Right, right. No, oh, he's a good boy. Oh, he said good boy. Now, a lot of people would say, I would never let a dog with his behavior pattern jump up on me like that. True. Um, he's a baby, and he's very sweet. And even though he's a little snappy and that kind of stuff, he's actually kind of insecure, too. So, he's not a dominant dog at all. This is more of an insecure behavior pattern. So it doesn't bother me at all to let him up on me. He needs the reassurance and I'm gonna give it to him. Good boy. Very good. And trust me, if I have a dog with a personality type that is more of a serious, like, I'm going to bite you kind of dog, I would never let them up on me. Ever. He's not like that. He's a reactive kind of dog. He needs confidence. Don't you? Yes, you need lots and lots and lots of confidence. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I know. Um, oh, Mr. Man. Get some of this neck hair off. So I'm going to start throwing in more and more of this. Stan. And this is what I mean, that he's going to end up a great groom dog. He will. That's why when he was having his funny little screaming fits on his last groom, I'm like, that's nothing. That's a poodle in the first year of life. <laughs> right? It's a poodle thing. And that's why I like to demonstrate, you know, even what is hard to watch sometimes because um, 
knowing how these dogs mature and how they act and what it takes to get them from point A to point B, if you followed some recommended protocols, you're gonna have a nut case of a dog. Sometimes they need to be handled just so. And as I said last time, the proof is in the pudding. So stand, bam. Let's go get him in the tub. Boy. So you notice as soon as I grabbed the head and he did good with it, I said good boy. So now that he's pretty well done teething, I'm going to start grabbing his head more and more. Good boy. This is going to teach him to have his head shaved. Stretch it back, stretch it back, stretch it back, hold hold, hold. All those things are going to help me going forward to have him perfectly behaved on his face. And if you're a pet parent, you can train your dog who's difficult on their face by having their treats right close by and two or three times a day Take the head, hold it, pop a treat in their mouth. Stretch the eyes back, pop a treat in their mouth. Stretch the lips back, pop a treat in their mouth. So we're going to come in and rinse the head. I'm going to turn the water on low. I'm going to work on the head holding with the head rinsing. With a loose, loose touch. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. That was very nice. 
very nice indeed.
So for a minute there, while I was uh, doing this front foot, if you go back and watch, he looked off to the side and he was doing lip licking. A lot of people will tell you that lip licking is a sign of him being very uncomfortable, a potential sign of danger and to watch out for it. And yes, that can be true. Um, but I allowed him to come back at my face and actually kiss me right after doing that. And I told him good boy when he did it. Why? Because of calming signals in dogs. Uh, if you want to learn more about calming signals in dogs, go to our Amazon storefront linked in the description below and click on books and get the book Calming Signals in Dogs. Or you can go to our um, website, GroomingSafer.com. I have a blog there called Calming Signals in Dogs. Um, lip licking and uh, yawning and things like that are signs of, that a dog's uncomfortable, but they're also signs that a dog is calming himself. And so some people may get fearful or nervous when they see that and actually kind of push the dog away. If I see that, I understand that that dog is looking in that direction, licking his lips while I'm cutting his nails. He, that tells me he's calming himself. He's trying to say, I'm not gonna bite, I'm not gonna bite, I'm not gonna scream, I'm not gonna react. I'm just calming myself, just give me a second. And, you know, and that's why I let him up close to me right after that. So, you know, some of you trained people might have looked at that and said, is she stupid? No, I have a plan. There's a method to my madness. All right. So I'm going to go back over the feet, which he doesn't like. Before I do that, I'm going to give him another treat because he did real good for the blow dry. This was his first time being introduced to the high velocity dryer. It upset him for a minute, but just like everything else you've seen with him, he's a very intelligent little dog. He picks right up on things and You'll see next time he will be used to that and it'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. So don't let the screaming stop you is what I'm trying to say. If you see a puppy wigging out, especially a poodle puppy, and see him being very vocal, don't let it deter you from having a soft hand and getting the job done. Here, let's go ahead and put you on the anchor. The tether, I should say. Tighten you up a bit so you're not so crazy. And if you remember last time, if you watched his first video, I'll put it at the end of this one in case you didn't see it. Last time, the restraint really upset him and he cried a lot about restraint. He's used to that now. Good boy. Good boy. He turned his head the other way, laid it on my arm softly. He's looking away from his foot. That's very, very good boy. Very good. You want to lay down? You can lay down. Give him more space. He's making the right choices, so I'm loosening him up. Good boy. He's looking away. Good boy. I heard him yawn. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Good boy. 
Eventually, I'm going to start using the clipper vac with him, but it's not time to introduce it yet. We'll get through a couple of grooms with the high velocity dryer and then we'll introduce that tool to him. So now I'm going to set his bevels on his feet. To do that, I'm going to brush all the hair down on all four feet. Ignoring his wiggles. Ignoring the wiggles. <coughs> Ignoring the wiggles. Now I'm going to take a 40 blade and I'm going to pull all the hair down, cup my hand around it, come straight in with my 40 all the way around the foot. Give me a nice clean bevel very quickly. <laughs> Ignoring his behavior. It's no big deal. Next, I'm going to use a snap-on comb for his body. I'm going to use a 30 blade with a 5 8 inch comb. Poodles, I like to clip her both with and against the grain. out again. You're fine. You're absolutely fine, my man. Now I'll go back over all that that I just did. Good boy.
not worried about his silly behavior. Just work around it. Clipping up the insides of the legs. No teeth, my man. All right, now we're going to use a snap on comb in this area. going all the way up to just behind the head. Sneak attack. It was a sneak attack. Yes, it was. Think you're smart, don't you? Huh? You think you're smart sneaking one in there? Ho, 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 ho. I'm on to you, Bubba. Yes, I am. You know what song plays in my head while I'm working on him? Baby Shark. Baby Shark. Baby Shark. Well, get over yourself.
right, let me back up. Let's get you scissored. Now I'm just going to scissor it all over and tie it all together. Right towards the end, we'll go back over his face and see how he's doing on learning to have his face trimmed. And this one. I'm very proud of his progress. He's doing fantastic. So he carries his tail right over his back. So before I do his pom-pom, I curl it in the position that it's going to be carried. Scissor it there.
otherwise it will look funny. So you gotta get it right in that position. Basically, you want to leave more on the back of the tail and less on the front when they have a tail that's carried curled over the back. Sometimes I don't talk a lot when I'm doing this, just concentrating. Good, my man. We're going to do his <coughs> top knot. Is that yummies? Hey, yummy stuffs. Oh, Alright, so to do his top knot, I'm going to have to hold the head. Tell them, are you ready? 
before I'm doing something that's going to be hard, it gives them a cue. Try to hold the head. Good boy. Very nice. Scissor line in over the ears. Good buddies. Oh, Mrs. Hughes, so proud of you. <laughs> Mrs. Hughes, so proud of you. Mrs. Hughes, I'm so proud of my boy. Yes, I am. Oh, he's a good boy. He's a good boy. Oh, he did so good. Yes, he did so good. What a good puppy. Yeah. All right. Romeo, back to work. That's another cue I give them. Back to work. When it's time to quit being silly, quit being wiggly, and start standing again. Very nice. going to come back in and shave his face and then I'm going to take the harness off and finish scissoring over the neck area. Let's do this with a treat. Good boy. All right, here we go. Good boy. Get his head positioned. Nice firm hold. I stretch back. It's okay. Ooh, got that. Got that. This is the area he really doesn't like. He wants to lay down. I'm going to give him more space and let him. Because like I said, dogs who really don't like something right before they're going to give you, they're going to down. Good boy. Here we go. Good boy. Good. So I wasn't saying good for the growl, I was saying good for the down. Good 
told you about with Lana where they kind of lay their mouth on you and it's like a loose laying and that's a kind of weird description but it's an interesting behavior that I've seen with a lot of dogs as I'm bonding with them over something difficult they they the lips just have this looseness or they'll lay their tongue on you and it's kind of weird but if you learn to watch for that it's a very significant moment, and that's why I've backed off, and I'm taking a minute just to relax and praise him, because when a dog who's giving you a hard time does that, it's actually a really intense thing. I can't explain it, but if you learn to look for it, they, they take their tongue and they lay it loosely on you, or they'll lean their head on you and their lips just feel really loose and they'll just lay it. It's a weird thing. And, you know, people probably looking at me like I'm nuts, but I promise you I'm not. Maybe. Okay. Back to work. Ready? There we go. Did you see that? Okay, I'm just going to let him go again. Good boy. Did you see that? Did you see that? He picked up on the cue and he got himself in position and he got himself ready. So I'm gonna give him a treat. Give him a big one, that was a jackpot. All right, let's do it again. Romeo, are you ready? Here we go. Good boy. It's all right. Good. Good boy. Good. It's all right. I know, it's hard. I know. I know. I'm going to stretch these lips back, clean up around the lips, good, he laid down, that's good, so to hold his mouth shut, I've got a finger up in between the V and the jaw, a thumb over the top, and while he may not like it, I'm going to get in here and do this. There we go. Because we don't want him thinking he can dominate by biting. <clears throat> we don't want him to learn that's going to get him out of it, right? There we go. There we go. Good boy. That's all right. See? Get in by this eye that we were trying to get earlier. Good. There we go. Good boy. Good boy. I know it's hard. It's hard. 
And part of this is hard on him too because he's still got his canines retained. So he's got his adult and his puppy in there. So it's a little hard. Excuse me. What do you think you're doing? What do you think you're doing? Tear away from the opening of the ear canal. There. We did the face. We did the face. We did the face. Yes, we did. Yes, we did. We got the face done. Yes, we did. All right, we're almost done. Yay. Yay. You're a good boy. You did it, didn't you? Huh? You did it, didn't you? Yes, you did. Yes, you did. Oh, it's a sweet puppy. Oh, sweet, sweet puppy. Mm -hmm. He's a sweet, sweet puppy. Miss Suzanne loves you. Yes. Yes, Miss Suzanne loves you. All right, here we go. Stand. So in my opinion, his training is right on track. He's doing very good. And you gotta remember too, when I work with a dog once every six weeks and I'm doing a bunch of stuff that they don't like while I'm working on them, you know, it's a whole different style of training. You know, from the dog's point of view, you know, every time he does something good, I go back in and do what he didn't like. You know, what kind of reward system is that? <laughs> from their point of view, right? Good boy. He's coming along nicely. Very, very nicely. Good boy. Look at you getting all grown up already.
say that's good enough for today. Remember, ties are just for fun and photos. They are not to be left on the dogs because they will eat them. <laughs> we don't want the dogs to eat their tie, see? Especially puppies. They're like, ooh, toy. There's Mr. Romeo and his puppy trim. Looking like a handsome man, all tired and ready for a nap. All right, Romeo, can you say goodbye? Can you say goodbye, everybody? See you, see you next time. All right, thank you guys for watching. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and don't forget to hit the notification bell so that you don't miss any uploads. I'll see you next time, guys. Bye. Bye, Romeo.